Who, who would like to start? Alyssa? Well, we're both going to say we're very excited, but let me ask uh, Chancellor Cartwright to uh, share. If you can turn around so you can be seen. I'm really excited. Anytime you, you, you find you, you're in a position where you have such a remarkable uh, individual um, who is just a, a tremendous scholar, someone who's demonstrated leadership, and you can get uh, that person to come and join your leadership team, um, it's just a, a truly uh, exciting day for Mizzou. She, I, I will say she, she is a multi-talented. I think the community will love her. I think the campus will love her. And I think administration and board will love her. She really combines uh, everything you want in a provost. It, it's, uh, Alex, I got to congratulate you. Tremendous hire. Tremendous hire, yes. Um, yes. Uh, you gave your report this morning. What's yes. Your, what's your main message out of that entire report? What do you want people to get out of it? The main message is that the university board of curators, the president, chancellors, deans, and the faculty members are committed to achieving excellence. But we have a long way to go. You've seen some of the statistics. And we're going to have to turn around our research programs. We're going to have to make key investments in our faculty and staff, and also really invest in programs that lead to student success. By that, I mean increasing the graduation rate, reducing the cost of attendance, and ensuring that our students are career ready when they graduate. Those are key themes for us. Well, I, absolutely, I'll stand by it. And let me say what I really said was that the narrative was not right. The, the campus was never in crisis. We had a protest, uh, and protests at campus are fair. Uh, but it was mishandled by leadership, absolutely it was mishandled by leadership. The sudden resignation that the board didn't even know about was a, was a real mistake. Uh, faculty led by Melissa Click, uh, that was a mistake. Yes, I, the, the mistakes were made, the university paid a price for it, but that's in the past now. And what are you going to do to correct all of this? Well, what we're doing is correcting it is, is the problems arise from the changing environment in higher education and whether we can withstand the disruption and the change. Change is not easy at any institution. It is particularly difficult with higher education and our, our shared governance system. But we've got great leadership. What we're going to do is have the courage and the fortitude to make the decisions in which, I think Ryan Rapp said it best, the people who will add value to this university and are willing to change will do better. The people that don't add value and are not willing to change probably won't be part of the institution. What are you doing to change the reputation of this? Institution? Oh, I think it's changing already. I, I, the marketing uh, campaign, is, at which you all saw the video of, is dynamite. It's interesting, again, that the false narrative was that the marketing campaign came because of what happened in 2015. That's absolutely false. The problem is we are behind the curve in getting a marketing campaign going. There are very successful institutions like Texas A&M, like Wisconsin, that spend more money and have been spending it longer than we have on reputation. It was a mistake by prior leadership not to engage in a public relations, a modern public relations campaign, which is the world we live in now, in the changing environment of higher education. The key message from Chairman Steelman was that the Wall Street Journal should come to Columbia and visit and speak not to us, but to the students, graduate students, undergraduate students, faculty and supporters of the university. This is a university that believes in its key mission, which is to train students, educating them for a career uh, that will be meaningful and to perform research that translates into economic development and benefits for society. So that offer is out there. We're also willing to pay for the airfare too. So please come and visit us. Can I say anecdotally too, yeah. I've talked to a lot of parents and, and students who have been through the tour over the last uh, uh, summer during the time when, when uh, uh, children were making their university decisions. And these are just anecdotes, but I am getting tremendous feedback anecdotally. And I want to say this too. I was lucky enough to meet with our new governor, Parson, the other day, and he told me that he is getting tremendous feedback across the state uh, that Mizzou is back and is the university that we, we know and love. 
I mean, just ask the uh, graduate students who are here today. Many of them had an opportunity to pursue their PhD at top universities around the country, but they came here because of the quality of our faculty members and the education they can receive. So this is really a place that people should come and see for themselves. Let's go over here. Yeah, please. <clears throat> the graduate students. Um, we we appreciate that the court has made a decision in this regard, but it is our intent to appeal this decision. Um, our primary belief has not changed that graduate students are not employees. They're graduate students who come to this university for the value of working with faculty members to learn and become scholars in their own rights by working with our faculty. So we do plan to appeal this decision in a respectful way, obviously. Yes, um, Alyssa, you had, a, you had your hand up? Uh, that, was actually that was it? Yeah. Okay. Yes, and that was your question as well? Anyone on the phone? Amber, yeah, Amber, Kansas City. Um, well, let's go around one more time. Alyssa. So increasing, increasing compensation and stipend has been a key focus for this university here in Columbia as well as the UM system. Uh, you may recall that graduate students received an average stipend of $12,000 three to four years ago. But a commitment was made that was supported by the UM system as well as the Board of Curators to raise that to $18,000, which is a 50% increase in over a period of, I believe, two to three years. Now, in that same regard, we want to make a long-term commitment to increase the salaries of faculty and staff, not just faculty. We plan to uh, have that evaluation process occur during the summer with the uh, increases that are being implemented, I believe, in September. But this is not gonna end with one year increases. We have to have a multi-year plan, and I'll be working with the chancellors to be able to do so. Uh, yes, no, you didn't ask a question. Do you have a question? So um, what I shared with you is that we do not agree that graduate students are employees and that we do plan to appeal. We're gonna have a longer discussion later today with the board about our strategy. So there's really nothing additional that I can provide, but I would like to refer you to our original position of why we believe that graduate students are graduate students and not employees of the university. I, I, I might just add before there's other questions, we haven't even had a chance to talk with legal counsel, or I, and I'm a lawyer, I haven't had a chance to read the opinion, so I, I think any comments more than the president just made are really premature. That's gonna be, frankly, a subject of the closed meeting that's starting as soon as we get there. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, how do you, you and also uh, Mr. Choi intend to gather more feedback and encourage more participation? Well, 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 I had a great professor here at law school who said there's no such thing as teaching, only learning. And I think what he would mean by that is that we have gone out of our way uh, through a lot of efforts to publicize this meeting, to publicize the ability to give feedback, uh, to make it available online in advance and even now. And uh, you know, all you can do is give people an opportunity, and and well, uh, the decisions are going to be made. And, sure. and I hope they give us more feedback. But uh, I think there's been an ample opportunity for faculty so, feedback. 
This uh, past the forum at the open mic wasn't the only opportunity for faculty and staff to provide input. We've had a number of meetings with uh, faculty members from throughout the campus that are part of the inter-campus faculty council, as well as the inter-campus staff advisory council. So they've had opportunities to provide feedback because many of these individuals who serve on these two very important committees are elected by their campuses, by their fellow faculty, as well as fellow staff members. And, uh, and uh, we're gonna continue that level of discussions with them, and through online mechanisms, they can also provide their input as well. I, I know I'll make, Hi, the Alex. I'll, I'll make the president Alex yeah. flinch, but I am disappointed by the lack of feedback by faculty. Yes, um, anybody on the phone who would like to ask a question? All right. Um, anyone else? Sure. Yes. So what I mentioned was that the applications have rebounded to the levels that, that existed uh, from the period of fall 2015 until the summer of 2016. Now in terms of enrollment, we still have some room to grow, but we're gonna do that strategically. We're not gonna be in a position where we're gonna lower our standards. We need to maintain our standards. We need to make sure that our students are provided the opportunity to take classes that they need in a timely basis so they graduate. So at Mizzou, they are pretty close this year to hitting their ultimate goal of about 5,000 to 5,200 freshmen. But they're also gonna be focusing on increasing the transfer students through many of the collaborative programs that they develop. At UMSO and UMKC, they will need to focus on growing the first time freshman enrollment and rely less on transfer students who come to the university. Missouri s and with their highly selective uh, designation by the state board <coughs> will also continue to increase their quality metrics, but at Missouri s and they've hit their capacity in terms of number of faculty members that can offer courses and the space available. So they're not gonna see much of an enrollment growth at the undergraduate level. Can I say it before, too? I, I see all the graduate students here, and I, and I appreciate you being here. And again, I, I am very serious that for students and people like you to make your voices known, I, I think it's very effective sitting there in those red T-shirts, but I appreciate the fact that you're doing it uh, in this way. So uh, I, I recognize and you're here and that's your point. Right. And also, um, as Chairman Steelman stated, we are gonna have a discussion in the, about this in closed session. So there's nothing additional that we can provide in terms of an explanation, but are there any statements that the graduate students would like to make? Yes, and if I can ask you to use the mic and turn around for the cameras, please, and introduce yourself. First off, I should say that I'm not a graduate student. I am Dr. Eric Scott. Oh, I am Dr. a graduate Scott. of this institution as of May. And I could say that over the past three years, the, uh, the continual statement from the university, from the Board of Curators, has been that you wanted legal clarification on our right to organize. You have that. You have that in the decision. The decision is not in any way ambiguous about this. You are trying to bust our union. Thank you. All right. Anyone, anyone else? This is your opportunity. Alex? Yeah, please, if you can turn around. Uh, Alex Howe, I was, uh, I've been involved for a number of years, I suppose, most recently president for the uh, graduate student government. Uh, I think this is an astoundingly uh, poor decision, uh, deeply disappointed, and um, look forward to what comes next. Can you clarify what the decision is? If they decide to appeal the, uh, uh, I guess it's called a ruling, or the summary judgment that we just had come down yesterday, uh, that's the decision I'm referring to. Alex Howe, H-O-W-E. All right. One well, more. 
if you can stand sure. and face the camera. There are multiple cameras and in different directions. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> My name is Good Joseph ball. Moore. Um, I'm a PhD can you, candidate. Sorry. Can you introduce yourself again? My name is Joseph Moore. I'm a PhD candidate here at the university. I'd just like to echo what um, Eric and Alex have already said, mm -hmm. but also I want to point out the fact that both of you have just said that you, A, have not had time to even read the decision, nor have you had time to consult with counsel, but somehow you've been able to make the decision that it's, it's a good idea to appeal this without having read or consulted let, with legal counsel. Let me clarify. Go ahead. I have read the decision, okay. and I have spoken to counsel. And I am the Chairman person. Has I am the person that shared with this group mm -hmm. that we intend to appeal. And, and, Chairman and, Steele, and I have not, and we haven't had a board meeting on it yet. And okay, seems a bit so. But may logical. I ask you, where did you go for your undergraduate degree? Gettysburg College, Pennsylvania. Gettysburg College. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you for coming to Mizzou. All right. With that, we're going to close this uh, uh, press meeting. We have to go into closed session to discuss some business. So thank you, graduate students. And uh, thank you very much for being here. Thank you all.